new research on how children perceive solid objects around them and how this helps them develop their minds and bodies has now been reported in Pediatric Physical Therapy Journal. Object permanence was the concept under investigation by a team at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, USA. It's the idea that babies can work out what's happened to solid objects even when they can't see them anymore. We, of course, look at children who have motor delays or motor dysfunction, some type of disability. And we tend to focus mostly on, of course, the physical performance of the child. But we know that it's one child, the mind and the body work together. So we were interested in how does early development affect cognitive development. And object permanence is a cognitive construct, meaning that you understand that objects exist even if you can't see them or feel them anymore. So for example, if I were to drop my keys under the table I, and I couldn't see them anymore, I would know that they were there and I would look for them because I understand that objects don't just disappear. They're somewhere. And you've been looking at children with delays. What was the group you looked at? It was a, you had a control study as well, a control group as well, didn't you? Yes, well we had a, a larger study called the Start Play study where we were looking at an intervention. But we needed something to measure very delicately some cognitive constructs. So we made up this scale on object permanence because one didn't exist. We also had children who were typically developing, so we had a comparison group of what normally happens with children. Um, babies are not born with object permanence in their brain. They learn it as they develop. And we also knew that other people had done research showing that babies start to be better at understanding object permanence when they get mobile. So they hear their mother in another room. When they can't move, they can't go look for her, but once they start to move, they can go and say, oh, she's still there. So she doesn't just disappear when I can't see her. But we thought that there was earlier development of object permanence, even when the child is starting to sit. So what did you do in the study? Well, we developed the scale, which is in the paper. And we looked at some of the very early things that babies do to understand objects. One of those is to just look at an object and follow it. So when you start to move an object across the visual field, is the baby able to both move their eyes and then move their head and then move their body because you have to move different parts of yourself to keep track of an object. Um, and then we started to do um, some parts of the test where the child would have to uncover an object. Understand when you see something go under something, then can you take it off? Um, and we looked at the children from the time that they were beginning to prop sit. And that means you sit a baby, you position them, and usually they have to hold themselves up with their arms. And so that's when we started the study. How does all this relate to sitting performance? Well, as you learn to sit, you start to free your arms. So your arms can start to manipulate objects. And so as you learn to sit, you grab an object, maybe you drop an object, and then you look at it and you see where it goes. So it's all of these things working together, your vision, your hands, your reaching, and your ability to sort of orient your body in space to follow where the object goes. And why is all of this important in tracking motor development and its impact on cognition? Well, object permanence goes a long way towards your adulthood. So for example, it goes to spatial skills and understanding if I see, for, for example, that tree, I do understand what's behind it, that the the rest of the tree is sort of an image in my mind. I understand that because I have learned about objects and spatial awareness. And this comes through interacting with objects. Um, and our study is longitudinal, so we were able to look at how the object permanence construct, as we measured it with our scale, changed from the time they were just beginning to sit to the time when they were really good at sitting. And they could you know, move and manipulate objects, and we could see the change in the, in the score over time. And what have you found, in fact? So we found that um, both typically developing infants and infants who are delayed, as they learn to sit, their object permanence skill increases. So even though the children with motor delays 
were much older when they learned to sit. The trajectory of that understanding was the same as for the children who were typically developing by younger and learning to sit. So we think that it's really tied to that motor skill, not tied to age. People previously, historically, have tied object permanence to how old the child is. And we found that it's tied to the motor skill. It's tied to how you learn to sit and move. And what is this new knowledge telling us about uh, how physical therapists should be handling their children? <clears throat> yeah, it's telling us that physical therapists need to be more aware of the cognitive skills of the child and not just think about the motor skills. We are very good at looking at motor skills, but what we have to understand is that we are building cognitive skills at the same time. And that may actually be, in the long run, more important for the child. I think that the implication is that physical therapists need to have some easy to use tools in the home or in the clinic that doesn't require anything very special, doesn't require much training, to track object permanence and other cognitive skills like that um, that are very tied to motor skills because I think what you'll see is that you may see some progress in motor skills but you may see even more progress in the cognitive skills and know whether your intervention is making a difference. Um, in it, you may be making more of a difference in cognitive development than in motor, or you want to make sure that you're at least developing them both at the same time.